we all know that in doing underwater archaeology, you're not going to find this underwater. As you've already seen by uh, my colleague Bruce Terrell's comments uh, and earlier with us, that the, the ship was heavily salvaged. And so what's going to be uh, left is, is really what's left over. But there was uh, a number of uh, uh, weather, in were weather incidents that came through that would have interrupted salvage, would have taken over place over time. Uh, a lot of things uh, get lost in the water, and so we, we know things would still be there. We were able to get in our survey of running back and forth of the lines, dragging a side scan sonar and a magnetometer, uh, an image that changed everything. And that was some solid uh, hits on the magnetometer, as indicated by that high spike to the right uh, measured in gammas that tells us, boom, we've hit a large, uh, significant metal object. Looks something like this, a little more clear. And so from that, we were able to move on and say, okay, uh, let us come back again and we will look around in this area. We came back in November of 2010, and by that time we had developed the search boxes that uh, Bruce had discussed. And you see back here on the bottom right of the screen. And there again, what you would do is go back and forth with your equipment and uh, look into that area and see if you could get those hits again and what's around it. We wanted to make sure that there weren't other sites. It was a scatter site. It was concentrated. Uh, are there other wreck sites there, even though they're not in the historical record, that might show up if we uh, went over them with a magnetometer? And we're in very shallow water of about 10, 12 feet. So uh, you should get some. So we took out what's called a hydroprobe, which is basically just a metal rod that's hollow. And then you force with this uh, five horsepower pump water into it which you can then take down as a diver, like the man in the water, and uh, put it on the seabed, and then you know shove it down, and that uh, power of that water is going to drive it through the compacted sand down to try to find whatever object you can at the bottom. And when you finally hit something solid, like metal or hard wood, a bit of frame or something like that, you're going to get a thump, and you're going to know it. Because the water's not coming out that forcefully uh, that it would prevent you from doing that. What did we find? Well, in the probing, we did hit metal several times, and we did hit what appears to be wood. But it was at about the 10-foot mark or so beneath the sand, which is already 10 feet in, underwater. So you're at 20 feet down to reach the planet. Now, that makes it very difficult, then, to think about <coughs> trying to either recover diagnostic artifacts that you could bring up something and say, well, this may, may help us identify it as the planet, or do much else. So where are we then on this whole story? Can we say for sure that we have found the planter? No, we cannot. But are we pretty confident, based on all the circumstantial evidence that we have, <coughs> that it is likely that this is the planet? And I think yes. How do you absolutely verify that? You would actually have to go and do an excavation. How do I feel about it personally? I think we got it. We have uh, no other evidence that anything else like this is in this area. We have done a lot of work on the geomorphology to try to identify that location. And uh, that's about as far as we can take it. Uh, being an academic, you know, you got to hedge your bets a little bit, try to protect uh, the fact that uh, truth requires a lot of uh, evidence. And we've got as much evidence as we uh, are likely to get without going to that next very big stage, which would in include a, a major uh, undertaking. 